All right then, so normally when we're working with data in a website, we'd have API endpoints to interact with that data. For example, we have a dummy job site right here, so we'd have job data. And then we'd also have an API endpoint to get that job data. So we'd have an API endpoint to add data, one to edit it, one to create new data, etc. So typically the API endpoint URLs would look something like this. We might have an endpoint which is forward slash jobs and that would be to handle a get request to get all of the job data. We might also have an endpoint which is again forward slash jobs but this time the server would respond to post requests to that endpoint and that would be to add a new job to the data. We might also have a get request handler to forward slash jobs forward slash ID where ID is a changeable route parameter and that could be for example one two three and that would be to get a single job based on the ID. So if this was one two three we would look on the server for a job with the ID of one two three and send that back and the data would be sent back to the front end in JSON format. So for example, if we wanted to send a request from the front end to the server route endpoint to get all of the jobs, we would use a fetch request to mysite.com forward slash jobs, which is this one right here. The server route would handle that request and send back the JSON data that we need. So the way we create server routes in Sapper is just by creating JavaScript files inside our routes folder. Then inside those, we export functions which run on the server when requests are sent to them. So let's have a try at setting up a server route in our application. So then I want to create some server routes for the jobs right here. And we're going to be grabbing the data from this index file right here. So what I'm going to do is create a new file. I remember to create server routes, we just create JavaScript files. Now I'm going to call this index.js. Now the way Sapper works, if I was now to send a request to forward slash jobs, then this would react to that because remember index is for the root level of whatever folder we're in. Now there is a problem with this because if we're sending a request to forward slash jobs, then this right here, this is also a get request to get the actual page data. And now these two kind of conflict because we have one for server routes and we also have one for just getting the page. So the way to combat this is to rename this to index.json, so .json.js. And now the request would be to forward slash jobs.json. All right, I hope that makes sense. So now what I could do is send a request here to forward slash jobs dot JSON, and that would trigger this server route right here. Now, the way we handle the request to the server route is by exporting different functions inside this file. So I could, for example, say export function and we use specially named functions. Now, if I want to respond to a get request, which is what this is, we want to send a get request ultimately to get some job data. Then I use a method or function rather called get. And when we send this request, Sapper is going to look for the get handler on this server file, on this server route, and it's going to fire this get handler. Now inside this get handler, we can pass in a few different arguments. The first one is the request object. Second is the response and third is next. So if you've ever used Node and Express before, then this is very much like that. This represents the request object and it has information about the request, which we'll use later on. This is the response object and it's what we use to send a response to the user. And this is the next function, which we call if we want to ever go to the next bit of middleware in the stack. So we're primarily gonna be using these things right here. So say I want to send a response, which is a JSON string of all of the jobs. Well, I can do that by saying response, which is the response object we get right here, and then use a method called end, so dot end, that ends the response and it sends something back to the user, and we can send the JSON data back here inside this method. Now we don't have any data yet, so let me first of all create some data in a separate file. So. Ultimately, if you're creating an application, you would probably reach out to a database and grab that data. But I don't want to overcomplicate things at the minute. So what I'm going to do is just store all of the data on the server itself. Now, I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to call this data.js. So it's a JavaScript file, not a JSON file or anything like that. And I'm just going to paste in some data in a minute. But before I do that, there is a problem with this. 
This right here is also creating now a server route and that server route is forward slash jobs forward slash data. Now I don't want this to be a route. I just want this to be a JavaScript file, which is going to store some data for me. So remember, if we don't want something to be a route, we can place an underscore in front of it. So I can rename this to underscore data dot JavaScript. And now this is not going to be used as a server route. So what I'm going to do, first of all, before I paste in the data, is I'm going to install a package called lorem ipsum. And that's just going to help me generate some lorem ipsum for the different documents I'm using or for the different objects inside the data I'm going to use. So let me open up a new terminal and I'm going to say npm install and it's just called lorem hyphen ipsum like so. And this allows us to basically use methods to create some lorem ipsum dummy text. That's it. So I'm going to import that first of all inside this data file. So import and we want to import lorem ipsum and that's going to be from the package we just installed. So lorem hyphen ipsum. Now the way we use this is by setting up a new constant which I'm going to call lorem and setting that equal to a new lorem ipsum like so and then if we want to generate some lorem ipsum we can do things like say lorem which is the constant i just created dot generate either paragraphs sentences words so i'm going to do that inside the data i create now i'm just going to paste this in so i don't waste your time and we have an object or rather an array right here called jobs which we're exporting so we can import it into another file in a minute and inside that array we have three objects each one has an id a title of the job a salary and details and the details is where we use the lorem generator so all i'm doing is generating some dummy text right here using this package so three paragraphs all right for the details so we don't have to write it all out manually right here okay so we have that data inside this file and now i want to export this data well i've already exported it but i want to import it into this file so i can send it back as a response so let me do that i'm going to say import and we want the jobs and that is from and we need to go into dot forward slash underscore data dot js all right so now we've imported that we can send it back as the response but first of all we need to convert it into a json string now the way we do that is just by saying json dot stringify and then passing in the jobs all right and that's all there is to it so now if we send a request from the front end to forward slash jobs dot json then it's going to look at this file and it's going to fire this get request handler. We're going to get the jobs and we're going to stringify that into JSON and we're going to send it back to the client. So now that is going to be stored in here. So this is no longer to do's, it's jobs. So let's replace that right there and also here. And then down here, we want the jobs as well. And let's log those to the console jobs. All right, so fingers crossed and let's hope this all works. I'm going to inspect over here so we can go to the console and we can see straight away we've got an array of three items and each one of those jobs are inside that array. Awesome. So that is working. So the next thing we want to do is actually output this data to the screen. So let me go back to the jobs components and all we're going to do is get rid of that log and down here underneath the H2 we'll do a UL and inside that we want to output an li tag for each job so in svelte in a svelte component the way we cycle through something is by using this each keyword after the hash so i'm going to say each jobs because that's what we're cycling through oops not just sob jobs and then we say as job now this can be named whatever you want you can name it a if you want i'm naming it the singular of whatever we're cycling through so this then cycles through the jobs and we can do something for each job. Now, what we want to do is output an li tag for each job. And inside that, we're going to do an anchor tag. The href we can leave as just a forward slash for now. And then we want to output the job dot title. That's all I'm outputting right now, the title of the job. So now I can close off this each by doing curly braces forward slash each. That's how we close the each loop. So if I save this now and come over to the browser, hopefully we'll see all of those jobs right there. Pretty good, right? So now we have those. We've managed to get the data using this preload function 
at the top and we're handling this request right here on a server route now inside this get handler. So the next thing I'd like to do is add new data from the front end. So for example, have a web form where a user can fill it in, send it. We handle that post request over here on the server route to add new data. So we'll start that process by adding a web form and a new route over here for that web form in the next video.